Hey guys, welcome to another video. Uh, something recently sparked my interest in making a new video. So I decided I'll just do something real quick. I uh, have some notes written down of what to go through and I'm just gonna try to draw out what I'm talking about for you guys. So the basic idea is that my friend mentioned playing ranked fives and I started thinking about things for ranked fives just, you know, while I was bored or whatever in the shower. And one of the things that I remember from playing ranked fives a lot in season three and season four when I was actually like on a challenger team was that no one understood how to 2v1 and no one really understood why you were supposed to 2v1. So you'd always get these people that are trying to do it, like ourselves included, because I didn't understand at the time either. And I still don't fully understand it. I don't think anyone does. Um, but like even my team was doing it and we really had no idea why we were doing it or, or how to take advantage off of it. So I tried thinking of ways that pretty much any rank outside of like the very very top of challenger and even probably even the top of challenger because that's where we were at the time and obviously the league scene has developed more since then but i think anyone really playing in the challenger scene or playing not in the challenger scene but playing ranked fives on the ladder uh can kind of use this strategy that i've come up with to just get a free advantage over people and i want to stress that this is not like something that you would see in competitive play because obviously in competitive play people know how to counter what I'm saying and I know the counter of what I'm saying also but uh, people playing in the game aren't going to know the counter obviously so you're going to see some things that are kind of like well they don't do that in competitive play and it's like yeah I know but it, you're not playing against competitive players so it's like a completely different playing field so these things that I'm going to say uh, may be inconsistent with competitive play but will actually work on the ladder. So with that disclaimer out of the way, I'm gonna talk about purple side just because that's what I wrote it for initially anyway, but you can mirror these same kind of strategies on blue side, you just have to swap things around a bit. Um, and I'll leave that to you guys to understand. So first, obviously for playing purple side, and we wanna start lane swap, we're gonna send our uh, support and AD carry up top lane. And you might be saying like, oh, well, why aren't you talking about like, you know, scouting and all these things like getting wards down here and down here or, or even over here and over here um, like they do in competitive play. And the reason is because it doesn't matter. Like <laughs> your opponents aren't going to swap anyway, even if they know you're doing a 2v1. Well, OK, maybe if they know you're doing a 2v1, they will. But the point is, is that there's no reason to scout because, you know, people aren't going to expect the 2v1 to be in with. And rightfully you shouldn't expect your opponent to do one so there's no reason to scout just stay back and like place your wards here here whatever whatever you know just just to make sure they're not invading your buffs um but your your support and ad carry you know top lane obviously your jungle and sub and your, your jungle and top laner are going to do the the gromp and blue together and your mid laner is just going to sit middle you know uh and play normal now the key to this strategy is you want to protect all your bases uh, for things that are expected of what people would do that don't know how to 2v1. Uh, so what I mean by that is people will automatically go to things that they see in competitive play as counters. So what I mean by this is if they see if you have a they have two and your top laner is here they're gonna to try to do these camps as their jungle and dive you bot lane because that's what they see in competitive play. They think that they can just 3v1 dive you and everything will be fine. So uh, I know this is kind of jumbled, but these things in mind, this is what the strategy is based off of. So you're gonna do uh, your top laner and your jungle are gonna do Gromp and blue buff and you're gonna share all of the experience. What this means is that your top laner will get level two and your jungle will get level two. Now there are two different ways you can do this. Uh, you can have your jungler tank all the damage so your your jungler, your top laner tank all the damage so your jungler will be healthy and not have to use health bots. 
if you do this, then that means you're planning on uh, your top lane are recalling and teleporting back to lane. Um, the reason why I don't suggest doing this is because then you lose teleport pressure for something that I will explain later on. So I would suggest that you have either you know trade tank or uh, whatever and just send your top laner down bottom with what whatever items he has because he's going to be covered uh, which again I'll, <laughs> I'll explain. So after this uh, what I would suggest is that you send your top laner down to bottom to soak against the, the 2v1. And the reason why this is going to work is because your opponents in the bottom lane are not going to be freezing like you're doing in the top lane because they don't know that the 2v1 is coming. Because rightfully they should not expect a 2v1. So this means that there's going to be a big wave building up that you'll be able to soak pretty easily. Say if you're playing something like Maokai, then you can uh, you know thin the wave with your E and your Q. Just make sure you don't push it too hard to where it starts freezing in the opponent's uh, side. Uh, so just when the wave starts getting you know like right here or something, you can start thinning it out a bit with your E and Q, so you're not as pressured under the tower. If you're playing like Gnar or something like that, same deal. You just want to kind of thin out the wave with your ranged abilities. Um, and after your jungler does this, your jungler and top laner do these two, your jungler's going to come down on and immediately do the scuttle. Uh, the reason why you want to do this is because if the enemy jungler is doing what I was talking about before, where he goes one, two, three, and then tries to dive bot lane, you want to have this cover here of the scuttle that will see him walking through. It gives you about like a, a 30 second window where you're going to have this because you know, it's going to last for like a minute or 45 seconds and he's doing an extra camp so you get like this 30 second window where you know you're not going to get dove. The only way they would actually do it is if he decides to go all the way through like this which I guarantee you they're not going to do because it's, it's ranked 5 so it's just not going to happen. So that, that scuttle protects you. And then after this scuttle, your top laner is going to go over here to the blue buff. And let me explain kind of the, the other side of the map first so you can see how this all comes together. So let's get rid of all this. And as I said before, your, your top or your support and AD carry are going to be in the top lane. So the idea behind this is that the top laner is not going to be leashing because pretty much everyone always starts at Krugs and you know does a red buff or whatever or I mean depending uh, depending on what side you're at you're either starting Gromp or you're starting Krugs pretty much everyone does this now so the idea is that their top laner is not going to be leashing so he's just going to be stuck up here and what you're going to do is something that I explained in my freezing video so I'll put probably an annotation on the screen or you can just uh, type into YouTube Korean freezing technique and you'll see a video by me. Basically all you're doing is just catching the wave and you're going to bring the, the wave into this brush and then your wave is going to push here and all the minions are going to group up like right here. And the reason why it's good is because it will create a freeze that eventually pushes back this way onto you. So your AD carry will be able to uh, create the freeze and your support will be able to zone off the enemy top laner from all the gold and experience. So the enemy top laner is just going to be stuck in this area while all the minions get pushed back to here and you're able to just create this freeze until you want to uh, create a bigger wave and push onto the tower. So the idea of this is that once you create this freeze it'll be about two and a half minutes and that's when your support will leave and go ward blue buff. Oh you ward more around here. So you can see when uh, when the jungler is approaching from this area. And the reason why you want to do this is because again, after the scuttle, your jungler is coming all over here and coming to blue. So you're going to have a two-man invade onto blue buff, and during all this time, you want to have your mid laner pushing into the enemy laner's tower. The reason why your mid laner is able to do this is because your jungler is taking a more aggressive route. Uh, which means basically he has more presence on the map. So because he's doing Gromp, Blue, and then going to Scuttle here, and then pathing through here, you know that for a certain amount of time there's going to be no jungler here. 
So during this time when your when your jungler is you know finishing all their camps, your mid laner should come through and ward here. Uh, they may have the enemy jungler may have the raptor buff, but if that happens, then you at least know where their jungler is and you know they're not going to blue buff. So while your jungler is in the area clearing scuttle or doing whatever, just go ahead and have your mid laner and ward the wraiths. This will give you a lot of information in addition to the ward that your support is going to put on blue buff. So after this happens, there are a few, reason why, few reasons why this is going to work. The first reason is that their enemy, the enemy top laner is going to be level 1. The second reason is that you have teleport advantage if you take my advice and don't do the top laner tanking in the jungle earlier and teleport back to lane. So what that means is that when you go into this 2v2 here with your jungle and support versus their jungle and top laner, you'll be able to teleport your top laner in. And also because you have your mid laner pushing, you'll be able to either force their mid laner to lose all the minions to the tower or force their mid laner to stay and not go to the fight so your mid laner can easily come to the fight before them. So you have all these things in your favor. Uh, and this is all an ideal situation, obviously, scenario, obviously, where you have uh, your mid laners able to push in. But again, you, you have, you're setting up this you're setting up this scenario in your favor because your opponent is uh, just naturally behind because they don't know that a 2v1 is happening, nor do they know how to react to the 2v1. So this is realistic. I mean, it sounds idealistic, but really it's, uh, it's very possible. And indeed, I would say it happened, it would be <laughs> likely to work most of the time. So anyway, uh, then you can go into this fight and you have so many advantages that you should be able to get the blue buff. And then after you get the blue buff, you can go back into your own red buff, the jungler. So here you have your three buffing, you're denying the enemy top laner of XP, and you're also at the same time bolstering your own top laner's XP and gold by not only covering him from the flank, but also uh, the enemy lane will be pushing into him because they don't know the 2v1 is there. And your AD carry is also getting free farm up in the top lane because their top laner is forced back to the tower due to your support and due to the freezing by your AD carry. And yeah, this is a very easy way to get very far ahead in the early game by abusing the fact that your opponents do not know how to 2v1 or they don't know that you are initiating a 2v1. So what do you do after this is the question. Let's get all this off the screen. So after you get the blue buff, the red buff, your oh, I can't undo any more than that. God damn it. Let me delete this layer. Create a new one. Okay. So in this time that you take the blue buff and then go back to the red buff, your AD carry should start thinning out this wave in the top lane and getting ready to build a big wave to push. And with this wave, you'll have about uh, two to three full waves in this big wave. While their enemy top laner is still level one, maybe he like snuck up into the brush or something and was able to get level two, but either way, he's not gonna have uh, very many levels. So once you do this, uh, the smite off of red buff will give your jungler a lot of HP again, and you'll be able to come back and, whoa, that was terrible. Come back through this way, and either gank the top laner that's on the tower with your support obviously or you'll be able to just come straight through and push a lane like say you're playing something like nidalee or elise who is a ranged then you can just easily just walk up to the tower and start pushing it and then here you have a 3v1 uh, with the potential of it being a 3v2 with their jungler um, or possibility of a 4v2 if they bring their jungler and you bring your mid laner and again, this is a, this is assuming that the mid laner should be pushing into the enemy laner at all times. So you may want to pick something like a Lulu or an Orianna to execute this kind of strategy. Something that can push very easily, because that is a, a very good, um, very good benefit to have when you're executing this kind of strategy. Something that can fast push. So. At this point, you're either forcing them, forcing the enemy top laner to die, forcing the enemy top laner and jungler to die, and you're getting a tower out of it as well. Meanwhile, your top laner is still down here, 
unless he used his teleport to go to the, the fight up blue, in which case he would still be here, he would just be running back or whatever. But if your top laner didn't have to use his TP, then you can even turn this into a 5v2 potentially, or a 5v3, you know, whatever. Depending on how many people rotate over, basically the point is, is that because you're attacking the lane that has the teleport, you're innately at an advantage uh, because, you know, they can't teleport to that lane. So being able to take this tower is very easily, and they may have rotated their support up at this point in time, but, you know, who knows. Uh, they may have think they weathered the storm, so to say, when uh, you already took that blue buff and then rotated back to your red. So at this point, you should be able to easily take the tower or dive them if they stay. And then the important part here is that you want to bounce the wave off of the tower. And this is something that they say and that they commentate on in streams all the time. And I assume that most of you understand what it means by now, but I will explain it very briefly. Basically, the idea is that you're forming the same kind of freeze that you did in the beginning of the game, but you're just doing it a different way. So the idea is that you want to, so let's say, look at bottom lane right now, and you have all these minions. You want these minions, most of them, to die one by one until you only have about one left, and then you kill the tower. Because now you have six enemy minions coming up, and they're gonna freeze right here, or whatever. If the lane freezes right here, then that means that the minions coming from your base take longer to get there. And now what this means is that because the enemies, or from because the minions from the enemy base get there in a shorter period of time, they're able to attack before your minions are. So that causes the, the wave to build up and push towards your base. Why do you want to do this? Well, you want to do this because this allows you, your top laner, to then, when you switch lanes, let me get rid of this layer. I'll just hide it, I guess. So this allows you to freeze the wave when you switch back to normal lanes right here above your tower. So if you're playing something like Gnar or, or Gangplank or, I don't know, a a anything that can easily deny your opponent, with range auto attacks or ranged abilities, you, your top laner when you switch back will not only be way far ahead of gold, in gold and experience, but he'll also be able to freeze the wave in front of his tower and further deny the enemy top laner. Because keep in mind, this tower is going to be dead. So that means the if your jungler comes, he can come through like here, through here, through here. He has like so many different ways to gank their top laner. So he has to be really afraid of dying. And when you're freezing all the way back here by your tower, he's like absolutely fucked for lack of a better term. And there's nothing he's going to be able to do. So their enemy top laner is going to be absolutely destroyed for the entire game at this point. Unless you screw up massively and give him like a pen to kill <laughs> somehow. And the, the good thing about this thing also is that it's not like the the enemy AD carry is ahead of yours. Your AD carry was freezing the entire time. So when you switch back to these to these two v two lanes down here, it's completely even. And in the mid lane, your mid laner has been pushing in the whole time and denying minions to uh, the tower for the enemy mid laner. So your mid laner is even ahead in gold. And maybe he might even be ahead in kills if he was able to roam to the blue buff or roam to the top and get kills from it. So all in all, uh, this is a very easy easy way to take advantage of people that don't know what how to 2v1 in rank 5's ladder and again i want to stress that this is not something that uh, i don't want to push this as something that would work in competitive play because it it obviously wouldn't um, this is something that used to work in competitive play but obviously things have adapted since then so for purpose of ranked fives I think this is a very good strategy to get ahead in the early game, and I know it may have been a little bit jumbled, but I hope you can learn from this and maybe bring it to your ranked 5s team and climb the ladder easier. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope it was helpful, <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time.